Good evening, good evening. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Pro Wrestling Talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. So for this video, I'm going to be giving my review of Impact Wrestling's Rebellion that took place this past weekend. Um, a good handful of championship matches and... Um, a big hardcore war but um yeah it was quite a show it was definitely quite a show <coughs> hmm, pardon me but before we get into it be sure to check out the link in the description for game beauty for an awesome lineup of video game themed makeup and cosmetic products and if you see something you like and you want to make a purchase be sure to use the promo code blitzballchamp and you can get 10% off off of your order so be sure to check that out. Anyway, Rebellion took place April 16th. This was actually at the Rebel Entertainment Complex in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So Canada getting some love. Um, Now with the card, there were two pre-show matches. So two pre-show matches. Started off with a tag team match. We had um, Champagne Singh and Mahabali Shara taking on the team of Heath and Rhino. Of course, Heath, Rhino, former tag champs. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this was an alright match. I mean, nothing too crazy, honestly. I didn't really expect too much out of this match, but it was okay. Um, Champagne gets the pin on Heath with a schoolboy pin, of course, using the the ropes for leverage, and of course, Shara holding the feet on the ropes. So pretty much cheap pin to get the victory, but. Rhino doesn't go home empty-handed as he was able to deliver a gore, a post-match gore, to Champagne Singh. A much-deserved post-match gore. But, but yeah, it was an okay match. Not, nothing really to brag about, if you ask me. And then next up, we had the had the Impact Wrestling Knockouts tag team titles on the line as the Coven, made up of Taylor Wilde and Kylan King, the champs, defending against Rose, Rosemary and Jessica Havoc of the Death Dolls. Now, I mean, pretty much rematch. It was pretty much just a rematch of what they had before. Um... Match was all right. Match was all right. I mean, I didn't think the Death Dolls were going to pick up the victory, but I mean, I don't know. This pairing with Taylor Wilde and Kylan King, while I'm happy for Kylan King, it's kind of an interesting pairing. But then again, you got to look at, you know, the tag team partners Taylor Wilde has had, you know, as a knockout tag team champion. Sarita, um, Hamada. And now Kylan King. Some interesting diversity in the uh, tag team partners there. It's, it's, it's interesting. Very, very interesting. But Taylor Wilde peds Roseberry after hitting the Wild Ride for the 1 2 3. The Coven, still your tag team champs. And will probably be for a while. I'm not a fan of this new witch gimmick for Taylor Wilde, but. I still like Taylor Wilde. I just don't like the gimmick. So, is what it is. Okay. So, then getting into the main card. The main card kicked off with the Impact World Tag Team Championship Ultimate X match. Of course, the champs. Bullet Clubs, Ace Austin, Chris Bay. Defending against the Motor City Machine Guns. And like I said, going into this match, 
the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, were three and O in Ultimate X tag team matches. This is this was their match. This was their match. But as great of an effort as they made, and you know, this was a match I was highly excited about, you know, and for good reason. But Bullet Club was not going to be denied. They were not going to be denied since winning those tag titles. And they were able to beat the Motor City Machine Guns at their match. At their match. As Chris Bay was the one to, br to uh, bring down the tag titles, drop them into the hands of Ace Austin. And yeah, Chris Bay, Ace Austin, still your impact world tag team champions you know it's all cool i love the motor city machine guns but you know it's it's bullet club's time so it's all good but great match really great match ultimate x impact wrestling where you can where is where you can find ultimate x okay next up we had the we had the design made up of um, Khan, Sammy Callahan, uh, Alan Angels, and Cody Diener taking on the team of Joe Hendry, Dirty Dongo, and Santino Morella. Santino Morella, first in ring action. And, I mean, we're reminded of Santino Morella. I mean, he did his usual stuff. You know, the little airplane salute dive. You know, the, the split drop down. And of course, he eventually used the Cobra. But not only did he use the Cobra Strike uh, to get the win after hitting D uh, Diener with it, but before that, Sammy Callahan turned on Cody Diener, had the baseball bat, and ended up hitting Cody Diener with it. Took him out. Santino Morella picked up the scraps, hits a Cobra strike. Dirty Dongo, Joe Hendry, Santino Morella pick up the victory. Uh wasn't really a match that I was hyped about personally. You know, I'm not really that much of a fan of the design. So, I mean, this match was kind of eh. But Santino Morella back in the ring. I mean, I guess I guess that's cool, you know. I guess that's cool. Um next up we had the last rights match. Eddie Edwards versus PCO. And of course, these two tore each other up. This match definitely went the distance. Of course, Alicia Edwards uh, tried to intervene, you know, shovel to the back of the head of PCO. And you know what? For a moment there, it looked like Eddie Edwards had it. It looked like he had it. Um, but pretty much, as soon as Eddie Edwards accidentally super kicked Alicia, Alicia Edwards' his wife, that's when I knew right then and there, oh yeah, PCO's winning. PCO is totally winning. And they even had a had a really nasty moment where Eddie Edwards pulled PCO into like the uh the ropes, like the It was either it was either at that moment or it might have been when he hit when Eddie Edwards hit the blue thunder bomb, I want to say it was when he pulled his arm at the ropes, but I could be wrong. But a PCO shoulder got dislocated. I, mean, I was just like, "What?" Ugh. And of course, outside of the rake, he hit it up against the turnbuckle post to, I guess, pop it back into place. But yeah, that was you know had that big hump stick sticking out. That was ugh. That was nasty. Uh. PCO eventually ended up getting the victory. So he choke slams Eddie Edwards into the casket, shuts the door, and bam, that's how 
That's how he won. But yeah, PCO getting some revenge. But poor Alyssa. Poor Alyssa Edwards. Eating a super kick from, from her husband. Okay. Next up, we had the X Division Championship Elimination Style Match. So, it was a triple threat. We had the champion, Trey Miguel, defending against Jonathan Gresham and Speedball Mike Bailey. A very enjoyable match. Uh, a good dose of technic technical action, high-flying, striking. We got the works in this match, for sure. We got the works. And you know what? It really could have gone either way. I was thinking Jonathan Gresham was going to pull it off. I really did. But he was actually the first eliminated as Trey Miguel eliminated uh, Jonathan Gresham after hitting him with a Meteora while he was trapped in a figure four from Speedball. So he hit that, pinned him while he was in that submission, Jonathan Gresham eliminated. And then Trey Miguel's speedball went at it a bunch. But when it was all said and done, Trey Miguel pinned speedball with a O'Connor roll reversal, and he grabbed a handful of tights. Grabbed some tights. And Trey Miguel is still your X Division champion. But you know what? This is big for him because he eliminated both competitors. You know, it could have been just Speedball eliminated Gresham or vice versa, but Trey Miguel eliminated both competitors. That's kind of a big deal, y'all. That's a big deal. He eliminated Gresham and Speedball. So just something to keep in mind. That's that's a big deal. <clears throat> So, and I believe this is Trey Miguel's second X Division championship run, if I remember correctly. So, but yeah, big win for Trey Miguel. Okay, and then next up, we had the Hardcore War. Team Bully versus Team Dreamer. Of course, Team Bully was made up of Bully Ray, Brian Myers, Moose, Masha Slamovich, and Kenny King. Team Dreamer was made up of Yu Yu Uemura, Bupinder Gujar, Killer Kelly, Frankie Kazarian, Tommy Dreamer. So, of course, no disqualification. And this was pretty much treated almost kind of like a War Games match without the multiple rings, without the cage. You know, they had a competitor come in every 90 seconds. Once everybody was in, then the match officially started, and then, you know, first to, you know, pinfall submission wins. So it pretty much was like a War Games match without the multiple rings, without the cage. So that's how I, that's how I looked at this. But anyway, here's the order of appearances. So the match started off with Moose, then Frankie Kazarian, so those they were the first two. Then Brian Myers came out. Then Gujar came out. Then Kenny King. Then Killer Kelly. Then Masha Slamovich. Then Yuyu Uemura. Or Yuya Uemura. Then Bully Ray. And then finished off with Tommy Dreamer. He entered in last. Um... Had a couple of different six spots. Um, Killer Kelly had the staple gun, which I thought was pretty crazy. Had the staple gun. <clears throat> but we saw, you know, ladders, ladders being used, tables being used, uh, staple gun. Like, it was crazy. It was really crazy. I mean, there was even a spot where Killer Kelly stapled uh, Moose's ball sack. It was crazy. It was really crazy. But she just went wild. She went wild with that staple gun. It was, man, it was crazy. But, um, the turning point was when Bully Ray had 
Tommy Dreamer on a table and looked like he was going to do a splash through the table through Tommy Dreamer. Bully Ray wanted for the refs to hold the ladder stable. They refused. They weren't going to. Bully Ray got down, grabbed one of the refs, was barking orders at him. The referees got tired of it, and they all joined in attacking Bully Ray. They just all started pounding and beating on him. They were like, enough is enough. Tired of how you're treating us. Enough is enough. We're going to beat the crap out of you. And that's what the referees did. Pretty much at that moment, everything was in favor for Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer sets Bully on the table. He does the diving splash onto Bully Ray through the table off the ladder. Gets the one, two, three. Team Dreamer picks up the victory. So, Team Dreamer wins the Hardcore War. And referees get a nice dose of revenge on Bully Ray. But something tells me this story is not over yet. I don't think this story is over. But who knows? Who knows? But I don't think it's over. Next up, which was kind of a surprise to me. So next up, the Impact World Championship match which I thought was supposed to be the main event, but it wasn't. It was not the main event. But anyway, Impact World Championship up for grabs. Competitors, Steve Macklin versus Kushida. Now, this was a solid match. I got to give Steve Macklin credit. He, he really worked Kushida. And, you know, Kushida had his moments as well, as usual. This was a solid match, y'all. And I'm not even a Steve Macklin fan, but that was a solid match. Macklin, Kushida, I got to give him credit. But as much as I would have loved Kushida to win this match, let's keep it real. There is no way he was winning this match. I'm sorry. I'm a big Kushida fan. I love Kushida. I've met Kushida. But there was no way he was winning this match. There's no way. I just got to keep it real. But, <coughs> gave it a great effort. Gave pretty much all of his offense to Macklin. I mean, just focusing on the limb, multiple hoverboard lock attempts. I mean, he stayed on him. He stayed on him. Um, he even kicked out of one KIA, but he ate a second KIA later from Macklin, and Macklin was able to put him away. Uh, one, two, three after hitting a second cut KIA, and Steve Macklin is now your new Impact World Champion. Not that big of a fan of it, but I get it. But I get it. He wanted Scott DeBoer to put the, the belt around his waist. Scott DeBoer was like, nah, that ain't happening. Nope, that ain't happening. But, as Steve Macklin, you know, was pretty much upset that he didn't get the belt put around his waist, the special guest commentator who made it known before the match that he has signed with Impact Wrestling, Mr. Nick Aldis, back in the Impact Zone. Former Impact World Champion, former two-time NWA World Champion. Back at the impact zone, Nick Aldis. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, pretty much, he had Scott DeBoer's back. And, it looks like we could be seeing Nick Aldis in the title picture. I mean, he's signed with Impact Wrestling now. So, hey, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Should be good. Should be really good. <clears throat> and 
And then the main event ended up being for the vacant Knockouts World Championship. So, I mean, hey, shout out to the ladies for getting the main event spot. <clears throat> As Jordan Grace, juggernaut Jordan Grace versus the virtuosa Diana Perrazzo. And this was a solid match. A very solid match. Both of these ladies did excellent. I like both of these ladies. I've met both of these ladies. Um, definitely a lot of strength, a lot of power, agility, technicality from both ladies. I mean, it was it was a a great match from start to finish. Two ladies, you know, who have been multiple time knockout champ world champions. So I mean, this was nothing this was nothing new. This was nothing new. But just these two greats settling it one on one had a pre match handshake. And they they did the do. They did the do. But after Diana Perrazzo survives a Grace Driver, she was able to eventually powerbomb Jordan Grace, reversal powerbomb off the turnbuckle, and then hit her with the with the Queen's Gambit. And the Virtuosa gets the pin one, two, three, and is now a three-time Impact Wrestling Knockouts World Champion. So congratulations to the virtuosa, Diana Perrazzo, back on the throne again as Knockout World Champion. So, great main event. Like I said, I, I love both ladies. They're awesome. But I feel like it's kind of, it's kind of ironic. Husband and wife, new champs. Remember, Steve Macklin, that's Diana's uh, husband. So... Pet. New power couple? Perhaps. And, once again, I gotta show some more love. Gotta show some more love to Philadelphia because they're getting another big show as August 20th. Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling collab once again for Multiverse United 2 for whom the bell tolls on August 20th back in Philadelphia, which I believe will be at the 2300 Arena, I believe. But yeah, Philadelphia, y'all are, are being blessed by some great professional wrestling. Y'all are, are getting blessed. I'm jealous. But yeah, got that to look forward to. And they'll be back in Toronto Again, uh, April 20, or excuse me, August 27th for Emergence. So you got August 20th, Multiverse United 2. August 27th, Emergence. So big name upcoming Impact Wrestling events, including the Impact Wrestling New Japan Pro Wrestling collab show. So should be good. Should be really good. But that will do it for this video. Um, Rebellion, pretty good show. Pretty good show overall. Pretty good show. Um, don't forget to check out the link to Game Beauty. And also, let me know what your thoughts are. What did y'all think of Impact Wrestling Rebellion? Did you like the show? Did you like the matches? What did you think of the card? What did you think of the outcome? Um, how do you feel about Nick Aldis being back in Impact Wrestling? Well, he was... Before he was Magnus. But how do you feel with him being back in Impact Wrestling? Um, Steve Macklin, your new Impact World Champion. The Virtuosa, now a three-time knockout champion. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For another Pro Wrestling Talk. Brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed evening, and I will see y'all in the next video. Take care. Laters!